there is no value system that's put out there that is actually beneficial to humanity because it's based on consumerism and profit making. Wealth is going to the rich faster than any other time in history. People are talking about the fact that the richest 1% have so much more than everybody else. Let's take the whole world's population and reduce it to just a representative 100 individuals. Poorest people on the left, richest people on the right. Now let's show how the world's total wealth is distributed. The vast majority have practically nothing, while the richest 1%, they've accumulated 43% of our world's wealth. The bottom 80%, meanwhile, that's eight out of every 10 people, have just 6% between them. The richest 300 people on Earth have the same wealth as the poorest 3 billion. So the number of people it takes to fill a mid-sized commercial aircraft have more wealth than the populations of India, China, the US, and Brazil combined. The success of the industrialized world has been dependent on the failure and the lack of development of the developing world. I mean, the reason that they're stifled is because they are indebted to the first world. We wouldn't be prospering if it weren't for the labor that's going on and the indentured servitude that's going on in the entire developing country. And so that's the power dynamic can never change in that respect because it's literally dependent on it being that way. The dirty and dangerous work done by children. The jobs down in the pits are typically reserved for teenagers with only tree limbs to brace the mine walls. The risk to them is real. Rich governments like to say they're helping poor countries develop. But who's developing who here? Each year, poor countries are paying about $600 billion in debt service to rich countries on loans that have already been paid off many times over. And then there's the money that poor countries lose from trade rules imposed by rich countries. Altogether, that's more than $2 trillion every year. Money systems have existed for centuries, and whether we realize it or not, have always been used to control behavior by limiting the purchasing power of the majority of people. One example of this is the criminal justice system. I think a lot of people view the criminal justice system as a, as a racist conspiracy is because of the fact that you have such massively disproportionate numbers of especially black men that are incarcerated in our prison and jail system. Up to 40 to 50 percent of the people in our criminal justice system are black men. And black men make up roughly 5 percent of the nation's population. And I think he, people can discuss and debate the causes for that, and this goes to everything from institutional racism, policing practices, and that, but I think at the end of the day it all boils down to class, is I think that the reason racial minorities are disproportionately incarcerated is because they're also disproportionately poor. The case Absolutely. seems to speak to a two-tier justice system. This is a rich guy who got a very skilled attorney to work the system for him in a way that most wouldn't get that type of justice. No one is claiming that rich black men are being incarcerated in massive numbers or even significant numbers. Rich black men get pretty much the same treatment that rich white men get, which is they don't go to prison. Environment shapes values. If they can't understand that, you don't work on the individual. You don't work on a person that has emotional problems. They may have emotional problems because they, they earn minimum wage. And psychologists try to adjust you to this system. So they've got to be stupid. The recidivism rate from prisons is high, and many proclaim prisons don't work because of this. But ultimately, prisons are a resounding success as a tool for social control to safeguard the political and economic established system. If you hire people whose only expertise is caging people to try to fix social problems, you're not going to get a very good solution. But I think that they're very good at caging people, and I think that's why mass incarceration has been a huge success for the ruling class in this country. According to the World Health Organization, the greater the economic inequity of a society, the higher its rates of violence, from homicides to war and the U.S. has the highest murder rate of any developed country. The United States is really number one in a lot of things, and I think the biggest thing that we can say that we're number one in is how many people we lock up. And the United States has roughly 5% of the world's population, but we've got 25% of the world's prisoners. 
China has four times as many people as the United States does and half as many prisoners. The United States has more prisoners than the Soviet Union did at the height of uh, the purges and the collectivization in the 1930s and the infamous uh, Soviet Gulag. Poverty is a vicious cycle, rarely escaped by the poor. Studies found that scarcity can reduce mental capacity and cognitive performance. In children, it affects their brain development and memory. Poverty is a bigger risk factor for mental illness than being exposed to war. Socioeconomic exclusion also prevents people from buying healthy foods, since processed, packaged food with high sugar and sodium levels is much cheaper than nutrient-dense, fresh foods. In recent years, a disturbing trend has emerged. There's a tremendous history of disinvestment from grocery stores that have moved out of lower-income communities deliberately as a business decision. The stress of poverty is also linked to health problems such as high blood pressure and cholesterol, elevated rates of obesity and diabetes. Statistically, they are far more likely to smoke. Additionally, the poor are often forced to live in areas of low air quality. Far from being a problem for only the poor, all areas of the socioeconomic spectrum suffer when our air, food, and water are polluted by fossil fuel emissions and radiation from nuclear accidents. Because of the nuclear accident at the Fukushima power plant, the whole area is now a radioactive wasteland, and the people who live there don't know if they'll ever be able to go home. The current energy infrastructure results in about two and a half to four million deaths per year worldwide uh, from respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease, and complications from asthma. We're in downtown Beijing and the pollution readings have once again gone off the charts. Readings are around 25 times World Health Organization standards. Including 50 to 100,000 deaths per year in the United States and 16,000 alone in California. The economic system that we're living in today is destroying the planet because it is based on an unsustainable model. We're seeing proof of that right now. The current energy infrastructure, uh, which has been going on for a long time, uh, has resulted in the accumulation of greenhouse gases and particles that cause warming of the Earth's climate. And the Earth's climate is warming at a rate faster than any time since deglaciation from the last ice age. If you were to integrate the cost of war, the cost of pollution, the cost of environmental disruption, a gallon of gasoline would cost between $15 and $20 a gallon. Now, the U.S. taxpayer subsidizes gasoline by absorbing the cost of pollution, by absorbing the cleanup cost of spills, by absorbing the cost of a global predatory military to secure those resources. On behalf of private energy companies, that then sell the oil at three to four to five dollars a gallon, which perpetuates the system. In addition, uh, higher CO2 levels, CO2 is an acid, it dissolves in water, becomes carbonic acid, and it's resulted in the acidifications of the oceans, and this is destroying coral reefs. We have to realize our planet does have a certain amount of regenerative power, and there's no question that we've been through numerous worldwide extinctions. We have fossil records of that, and the Earth has recovered. There is a limiting carrying capacity, though. Uh, in addition, you increase the incidence of wildfires and forest fires, and that increases air pollution as well uh, with higher temperatures. I'd like to think that someday we will become a multi planet species, but we still have to take care of our home planet.